Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In a previous video, we answered a question from a viewer that had been sent in via Instagram. Now, since then, we have been literally inundated with a question that has come in also on Instagram, and this time it's from, I uh, always struggle with these Instagram names, DMCITFC1, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, and his question is, Hi Joe, could you explain how to find out the answer to a question from one of my mock papers, please? Draw and label a suitable power triangle to scale and calculate the power factor for a 3 kilowatt load which draws 22 amps from a 230 volt supply. Thanks, Dave. Great question. Absolutely love this question. So we're going to answer that now. Now, generally speaking, the best thing to do with this kind of question is to write down everything that the question has given you and then try and figure out what it's asking you to find. And I generally do this with all of the questions that I get asked in exams and assessments. So let's have a look at this. So we've got, first of all, it tells us that we've got a three kilowatt load. So we know that the power in this question is three kilowatts, okay? Now that's interesting for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's in kilowatts, so that's the first thing. And also, we're told that the unit here is in watts. So that means that this value must be the true power. So this is the true power from the circuit. In other words, the resistive part of this load. It then tells us that it's drawing 22 amps from a 230 volt supply. So we've got uh, 22 amps and the voltage is 230 volts okay and ultimately what we're trying to find here is uh, a power factor and a power triangle to scale so we want to know what the power factor is that's going to be important and we also need to draw a power triangle to scale so we need to draw that as well okay so there's what we need to achieve in this question okay so if we want to find out the power factor there's a few different ways that we can do this and actually there's a there's kind of a couple of ways that we could approach this question, uh, but I'm going to take you the way that I would do it. Uh, if you've got another way of doing it, that's absolutely fine. Again, it's always worth just checking with your teacher that if there's a preferred method that they want you to use, that you're using that method, and also how much detail they want you to go into. So I'll show as much detail as I can here so that you don't miss out on anything like that. So let's figure out, first of all, how to find the power factor. So power factor, there's a few ways we could calculate that. But in this case, if we want to find the power factor, because we're dealing with powers, that's fairly obvious here, we would do the true power in watts or kilowatts, we'll put it in kilowatts, seeing as that's what the question started off in, divided by the apparent power in kilovolt amperes. So there we've got the true power divided by the apparent power. Again, if you're not sure where this formula is sprung from or why this is the way it is or even what power factor is, then please go back and watch some of my videos on AC theory. If it's a completely new subject, go and watch my AC theory playlist because that's going to massively help you out with understanding this subject. So uh, in order to calculate the power factor here, uh, we've got the true power. We know that that is three kilowatts. And because in this case we're finding power factor, which is actually just a ratio. If we keep everything in the killer multiple, then we should be okay. So in order to find the apparent power to go on the bottom, that's what we're missing at the moment. So how do we actually calculate the apparent power? How are we gonna do that? So apparent power, how do we calculate that? Well, to find the apparent power, it's very simple. We just uh, find the current flowing into the circuit and multiply it by the voltage being applied to the circuit because apparent power is the result of the total current multiplied by the total voltage. So in this case, we're simply gonna do 22 times by 230 and 22 times by 230. That's one of those questions I should probably be able to do in my head, but I'm under pressure on camera, so I'm not gonna attempt it, is 5,060. So there we go, we've got 5060 volt amperes and we're going to change that into kilovolt amperes so that will become 5.06 now i think i'm pretty sure that the uh, the teacher who set this question probably wanted that to come out at five i think and i think when we draw this to scale it'll be so close to five whatever scale we use that we could probably treat it at that but we'll, we'll put it in as accurately as we can so 5.06 uh, and in this case that is Killer 
volt amperes we've got in. So we've just divided that by a thousand to turn it from volt amperes into kilo volt amperes. So what we've got to do now is do three divided by 5.06 and that's going to give us our power factor. And again, if you're not sure what power factor is, please go back and watch my videos about it. So power factor is just an indication of how efficiently an inductive load is working generally speaking, that's what we can consider it to be. So three divided by 5.06. So we come out with 0 0.59, but I'm, I'm gonna do this to three decimal places here, 0 0.593. Now it's interesting on the calculation, you can see that there's actually a little dot above the five and many people fall into the trap of thinking that means that that five is recurring. But actually, if there's numbers coming after it, that can't recur because this position is taken up by a number. What you'll actually find if you scroll to the end of that number, and it's quite a long number in this case, there's another number at the end with a dot above it. And it means that that whole chunk of numbers then repeats and repeats and repeats forever, not just the one number that has the dot above it. So just a little bit of bonus material for you there. So power factor is equal to 0 0.593. So how does this help us now to answer the rest of the question? We've solved one part of the question. We've found our power factor. So we can kind of scrub that bit out now and say that the power factor is equal to 0 0.593. So we're happy with that. Notice there's no units being put on there. That's because power factor is simply a ratio. It is not uh, a unit in the sense of having uh, a letter that we put on the end of that. So it's not measured in anything, it's just a ratio. So 0.593 is the power factor. What do we do with that information now? Well, what we need to do next is we need to draw the power triangle to scale. Again, there's a couple of different ways that we could do this. For people who are familiar with Pythagoras, they probably can already see kind of the dimensions of this triangle, how it's gonna end up being. But again, let me take you through the process because it may be that when you get into your exam, it's not quite as nice and neat as it appears in this question. So what I would do at this stage is I would take that power factor and I would use it to figure out what the phase angle is. Now the phase angle is actually a measurement of how far out of phase the voltage and current is in the circuit. Again, please go back and watch some of my videos if you have no idea what that means. But it is also the angle that we're gonna use when we construct our power triangle. So that's where it's gonna come in really handy. So how do we change this power factor that we've got here into an angle? Well, it's very simple. It's handy if we remember that the power factor in a circuit is equal to the cosine of theta, the cosine of the angle in the corner of our triangle. So in a moment, we're gonna to draw to scale a triangle that looks something like this. So this is just a rough sketch at the moment. It's a right angle triangle. Uh, it's an inductive load because it's a motor. So we've drawn the triangle pointing up, induct points up. And we're interested in this angle here, theta. We need to be able to draw that angle really in order to draw this triangle to scale. So the power factor of the circuit is equal to the cosine of that angle theta. Well, how does that help us out? Well, we've just said that power factor is equal to the cosine of theta. So power factor is equal to the cosine of theta, which is equal to 0.593. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out what the angle theta is. And in order to do that, we need to rearrange this formula. Now, when we do this to find the angle, this becomes theta is equal to the inverse cosine, and we write it like that, cos to the power of minus one. Sometimes you'll see this referred to as the arc cos of a value of 0 0.593. Now, we can actually perform that function on the calculator, and actually all the calculator is doing is it's just looking up effectively in kind of a table of values. It's finding this value, 0 0.593, and it's saying the angle that has a cosine of 0 0.593 is this. So let's put it into the calculator and see what that looks like. So we've got theta is equal to, uh, so in order to do this, we press shift and then the cosine button, and that brings up cosine to the minus one, just like we've got here. And then we put the number in, 0 0.593. Now remember, all we're doing is we're saying to the calculator, please tell me, the angle that has a cosine value 
of 0.593. And when we hit the equals button, it tells us that angle is 53.63 degrees. Okay, so we've got 53.63 degrees. So we now know that this angle here in the corner of our right angle triangle is going to be 53.63 degrees. So that's super helpful because now we can draw that. Now, obviously, we're going to struggle to draw accurately 53.63 degrees. So we're probably going to aim to get the angle somewhere just above 53 and sort of closer to 54 than it is to 53. But again, when we're dealing with that kind of level of accuracy, we can be reasonable with ourselves. OK, so how do we draw our power triangle to scale? Well, it's not a bad idea, actually, just to do a very quick sketch of it here, just so that you can familiarise yourself with what it's going to look like. So let's try and remember what goes on the three sides of our power triangle. We've got here the true power. And then the, so the true power is always the horizontal side. And then the long side, the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle, that is always the apparent power. And as you can see, we've already calculated what that apparent power will be. We've already found out that it's 5.06 kVA. Then we're going to figure out what this side is here, and this side is the reactive power. So that's the long side of the right angle triangle. Okay, so we've got the apparent power, the true power, and the reactive power. So to start drawing our triangle, we need to draw one of these sides. And in this case, we're going to start with the true power, because that was a value that we were given right at the very start of the question. So that's a good value to start with. So we need to draw a horizontal line, but we need to draw it to scale. OK, so we need to make sure that it is uh, not aligned with a random value for length, that it's a very specific value for length. So what you need to do before you start drawing this is to figure out what scale you're going to use. So in this case, I'm going to say that one kilowatt is equal to 10 centimetres. Now, when you do this on your bit of paper for your mock exam or for your real exam, you're obviously going to use a smaller scale because it won't fit on your A4 bit of paper if you try and draw it to this scale. So I'm going to use one kilowatt equals 10 centimetres. You might use something like one kilowatt equals five centimetres or something like that. But the principle stays the same, even if the size of the triangle is slightly different. So we look at this and we think, how do we get from this side to this side. How do I turn my power value into a length value? And the answer is we look at this and go, how do I get from here to here? Well, how do we change a 1 into a 10? It's very simple, isn't it? We just times by 10. 1 times 10 gives us 10. So if I want to draw a line that represents my true power to scale, I need to take my true power of 3 kilowatts and I need to times it by 10. And that's going to turn it into my length measurement. So in this case, that's going to give me 30 centimetres. So there we go. So my line that represents my true power will be 30 centimetres long. So I'm going to get my ruler here and I'm going to draw this on the board. I'm going to pop it down here and try and get this reasonably level. And I'm going to draw this 30 centimetres long. So there we go. So the distance from there to there is 30 centimetres. That's nice. And this side represents my true power. So it's quite important at this stage that we think about speaking to our teacher about how much information they need us to put on here to get the maximum points for the question. So my take on it is that really you can't put too much information on this triangle. If you miss something off, it may be the crucial thing that the teacher needed to see. If you put all the information on here that you can think of, then actually you've probably covered your back and shown the information that you need to. So just think about what this side represents. We need to label it up. That's going to help. So we've got the true power. And the true power in this circuit is equal to 3 kilowatts. And then I'd also put on here the length of this side here. I'd say that that is equal to 30 centimetres. I've shown my working out of how I got to 30 centimetres up here. Again, very important. But I've just included it down here so that there's as much information on this triangle as we can possibly get. Now, again, there's a couple of ways that we could do this now. However, we've gone to the trouble of finding the angle. So let's use that angle. 53.63 degrees. And we're going to pop that on there. And we're going to pop that on the end there, like that. And then we're going to come around here, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So we're looking at the inside ring of numbers here because we're starting from 0 lined up with our line there. So there's 50, and then we go 51, 52, 53, and there's 54. 
four. So we want to be just kind of just past halfway between those two. So again, if you can achieve this level of accuracy in your drawing, then you're doing very, very well when you're working with a tiny little protractor. It gets a little bit trickier. So there's 53.63 degrees. So we'll take that off there. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to show that this side here will represent the apparent power. I'm going to go back to my blue pen to stay consistent. And I think I might need to just take that up a little bit, actually. All right, so there we go. That should get us to somewhere where we need to be. So this side of the triangle, I could kind of measure this out to exactly the right length if I wanted to. But actually, I don't need to. So I can box a little bit clever here, which is helpful. I'll just fill in my blue line there because I don't like things getting scuffed. And now all I've got to do is to fill in the remaining side of my triangle. And of course, we know that this angle here will be a right angle, 90 degrees. So we just pop the protractor on there and we bring that around to there like that. Get that lined up. And we're at 90 degrees just there. So that's nice. So then all I've got to do is just pop that on there, pop that on there, and it looks like I need to extend my apparent power side just a little bit. There we go. Oh, look at that, nearly there. There we go. And we'll just wipe that bit off. And there we go. That is actually the angles drawn to scale. I'll show that that is a right angle. Again, label it up, make sure you show as much information as you can. I'm going to show this angle here. I've gone to all the trouble of calculating it. So I'm going to show the teacher how clever I am by putting the angle in there, 53.63 degrees. And then I'm going to label up the rest of the sides as I've already done. So I know that this side here is the apparent power, is the apparent power. And I know that has a value of 5.06 kVA from my calculations earlier. And what I should find when I measure this is that actually using the scale, we should find that this value in centimeters that I've got here, which is, yeah, just, just over 50. Yeah, so that's maybe, yeah, 50, maybe 0.6. It's, it's very, very close. So there we can say that that is basically 50 centimeters. So we're very much in the ballpark there of what we're expecting to be. So that's 50 centimeters, which is nice. And if we go back to our scale, we know that the apparent power is 50 centimeters. So it's 50 centimeters long. And then we look at this and we think, well, how do I get from a centimeter value back to a power value? How do I get from this side to this side? Well, how do I get from 10 to one? Well, I just divide by 10, don't I? 10 divided by 10 gives me one. So therefore 50 centimeters divided by 10 will give me 5 kVA. And we could see that the value we were aiming for was 5.06 kVA. So we were really, really close with the accuracy of this drawing, which considering I'm working on a whiteboard with giant tools is not such a, uh, a bad result really. So I've nearly finished doing this now. I just need to label up this side. This is obviously the reactive power. So we'll figure out what the reactive power is and we'll write that down in a moment. So in, again, in order to do that, we could, we could do some Pythagoras to figure it out, no problem. Or we can just simply measure it here. So this side here is 40 centimeters long. So we've got a length that is 40 centimeters. And again, if we want to figure out what that is in, in this case it'd be K vars that we'll figure it out in. We just again think, right, I've got a length. How do I get to power? I do this number divided by 10 will give me that number. So therefore we do 40 divided by 10 will give me four K vars like that. So we've got four K vars. There we go. And I don't think we've missed anything off the drawing. So we've got the sides labeled up. We've shown their length and we've also shown what values they represent, we've shown working out so that we understand how the scale triangle works. And this is the way that we've chosen to do it by finding the angle. There is another way of doing it. Um, and again, to my mind, they're, they're equal. There's no real difference between them. This is just the method I happen to prefer. Again, check that your teacher is happy with this method. 
But that is how I would answer that question. So I've found the power factor, as we were asked to find at the start, 0.593. And I've also drawn a power triangle to scale, fully labelled up, showing what each side is, what values each side represents, and how long they are physically. So hopefully that's answered your question, Dave, uh, and I hope that that has been helpful to you. All that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.